Another way we can define acid and bases was developed by two chemists, Johannes Bronsted and Thomas Lowry. They came up with another definition for acid and bases so that the solvent doesn't necessarily have to be water. Their definition they came up with, an acid is something that is a proton donor. And we said again, a proton is our hydrogen ion. A base is the substance that is going to be the proton acceptor, or the one that accepts the hydrogen ion. Let's look at an example using a bronsted lowry acid base reaction. So our acid we have in this example is hydrochloric acid, and we're going to react it with water as our base. The definition of bronsted lowry acid is a proton donor. So we have here, we have HCl written down here at the bottom, and the hydrogen is in red. So an acid is something that donates the proton, the H+. So where the proton is going is to the base. So we are adding an H plus to our water molecule, which is our base. And when we do that, we now have three hydrogens. This is our new hydrogen that was added here. And this was a neutral water molecule. We're adding a um, hydrogen ion that has a plus one charge. So we end up with a charge here forming our hydronium ion. What's left is when we remove that hydrogen ion is chlorine. And that was originally chloride right here with a negative one charge. So this is an example of doing an acid-base reaction. And again, your acid is your proton donor, the one that donates the hydrogen ion. The base is the one that accepts the hydrogen ion. Here is another example where we have NH3 as our base, and we have our acid as water. So our water, again, is the acid. This is the proton donor. So in my drawing here, the hydrogen is being donated over to our NH3. So when we donate the hydrogen, what's left is just OH by itself. It was neutral. We're taking away a plus one charge. So we end up having a negative charge when we remove that plus one. So we get hydroxide ion here. And then our base, which is the proton acceptor, when it receives that hydrogen ion, we now have added a fourth hydrogen here forming NH4. This was neutral. And now we ended up something with a positive charge. We now have our ammonium ion. So this slide is showing us at the molecular level the reaction between water, which is our acid, and ammonia, which is our base. And again, the acid is the one that donates the hydrogen ion. And when it donates it to the base, that's the acceptor, the proton acceptor, when we donate one hydrogen here, we added a hydrogen, we end up with NH4. And we lost a hydrogen here, we get hydroxide. So this is just showing us when we take ammonia gas, and if you were to bubble it into water, you're forming hydroxide ion and ammonium ion. But remember, this is a weak base. So this is showing us here at the molecular level again, almost all of them stay together, our NH3, as molecules. Very few ions are formed. So again, here is another picture to show us. This represents NH4 with the charge, and this is our hydroxide ion. You may have noticed in the previous examples we did that we had water acting in one of the examples as an acid. And then in another example, we had water acting as a base. So this is actually a new term to learn. It's called amphiprotic is when you have a substance that sometimes it acts as an acid and sometimes it acts as a base. Water is just one example. There are other compounds that can behave the same way as well. So I want you to know the term amphiprotic. Sometimes it's an acid, sometimes it can act as a base. Two more definitions I want you to know are what a conjugate acid and a conjugate base are. We're going to start by first talking about conjugate bases. So in our previous examples, we did this reaction. We had HCl plus water as our base, and we formed hydronium ions and chloride ions. So the new term here is, again, an acid is a proton donor. What it becomes after it loses its proton, or its H+, plus, so after it donates the H+, plus, what it becomes is what we call the conjugate base. So in this example here, we had HCl. It loses the hydrogen ion and the hydrogen ion goes to my base. 
and what the acid becomes after it lost that is just the chloride ion so that's what we're showing just here is just this portion here HCl I'm losing a hydrogen ion what's left over is I removed the hydrogen ion so I have just chloride this is neutral when I start my hydrogen ion has a positive one when I remove it I have chloride left with a negative one here so this is a term we would call a conjugate base conjugate base is what the acid becomes after it loses its hydrogen ion a conjugate acid is what your base becomes after it gains a proton so for example if my base was water the hydrogen ion is being accepted by my base that's our definition of a base when it accepts it, I have two hydrogens and I added one more hydrogen so now I have three hydrogens this was neutral I add an H plus so my charge becomes positive and I end up forming my hydronium ion which is my conjugate acid so conjugate acid is what the base becomes after it gains a hydrogen ion we form the conjugate acid let's do some examples determining the conjugate base for our acids that are given to us so again an acid always donates a hydrogen ion so it's what it becomes after it loses hydrogen so if I have HBr and I take away one hydrogen what I'm left with is just the Br by itself this was neutral if I'm taking away the positive this has to become negative charged because a plus one and a negative one make a neutral compound hydrobromic acid the one we down have down here we have HSO4 we're losing the hydrogen and after we lose it we have SO4 left in this case we're starting with a negative one charge we're taking away positive so it's going to become more negative so this becomes two minus this is sulfate one of your polyatomic ions that we've learned before at the bottom we have ammonium ion we're taking away one of our hydrogen ions here so we end up with NH3 this one has a positive one charge we're taking away that positive one charge so it just becomes neutral we have NH3 in these examples we'd be determining the conjugate acids for the following bases that are given our first base is water water we have two hydrogens a base is something that's accepting a hydrogen ion so we're adding to it so if we have two hydrogens we add one more we have H3O water is neutral we're adding a plus one charge so we end up with a plus charge which is our hydronium ion the next one we have NH3 ammonia we're adding another hydrogen so we have NH4 this is neutral as well we're adding a plus charge so it becomes plus one we have ammonium ion the one down here at the bottom we have chloride ion by itself we're adding an H plus to a Cl negative so we end up with HCl plus and minus charges cancel out and that's neutral here is showing us at the molecular level of an acid and its formation of its conjugate base and of a base forming its conjugate acid so the first example we have water as our acid so this is my representation here of H2O and I'm removing a hydrogen ion because that's what an acid does is it donates hydrogen ions when I remove it what I'm left with here is the oxygen and the hydrogen this was neutral I end up with a negative charge my hydroxide ion which is my conjugate base for H2O now my base in this example I have NH3 and a base again is one that is accepting a hydrogen ion it's accepting the proton so when I accept that we actually now have four hydrogens attached to our blue nitrogen in the center and again this was neutral I'm adding a positive one charge so I end up with ammonium ion so overall down here at the bottom it's showing us our acid base reaction so again the acid donates a hydrogen to the base and then we can define what the products are are the conjugate base for the acid and then the base has a conjugate acid in this example I would like you to complete the reaction between an acid and a base and label which compound in the reactants is an acid and which compound is a base and then label the conjugate acid and bases that they form 
So let's look at our reactions. We have HF plus NH3. So we know that acids always will have hydrogen written in the front. So that's your clue that this must be the acid. So we'll label that acid. Therefore, NH3 must be our base. By definition, an acid is something that is a proton donor. So we will be losing this hydrogen ion and it will be accepted by our base. So what the acid becomes after it donates the hydrogen ion is called our conjugate base. So let's start by writing our conjugate base. We remove a hydrogen ion, so what's left is F, and this is neutral. We're taking away hydrogen that has a plus one charge on it. So what we have behind is a negative charge on our fluoride ion. And now NH3, when we add a hydrogen ion to it, we have NH3, we're adding one more hydrogen, so it becomes NH4. It's neutral, we're adding a plus charge, so it's a plus charge. So this is our conjugate acid, what the base becomes once it accepts that hydrogen ion. So that would be labeling our conjugate acids and bases and our acid and base that we started with. So this is overall showing what we've done here, and this is showing you that a pictorial view of our molecules here. So this is kind of nice to see with the NH3 here that we're adding on, and we have NH4, and the overall charge becomes positive. The fluoride, when we lose that hydrogen and it's donated here, we have fluoride ion. In this example, we have a person that is suffering heartburn, and they might take Alka-Seltzer to help neutralize their stomach acid. Alka-Seltzer contains sodium bicarbonate, um, which is a weak base. So in this acid-base reaction, what I'd like you to do is to determine the conjugate acid and the conjugate base that we would form. So our acid in this example is our hydronium ion. Again, the acid is something that's donating a hydrogen to our base, so we're losing a hydrogen ion here. What the acid becomes is called our conjugate base. So let's start with forming our conjugate base for this. Um, after we lose, we have H3O, we're losing one hydrogen, so we get H2O. We have a positive um, charge on hydronium, we're taking away the hydrogen ion, that, so that becomes neutral, so we just form water, liquid water. The other compound we form is our base is accepting this hydrogen ion. So we have one hydrogen, we add another one. So we have H2, CO3, and this was originally negative. We're adding a positive, so they cancel out and we get something that's neutral. So this would be my conjugate acid. And with this compound, this is actually a weak acid called carbonic acid. Um, I would only ask you to do the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. But just to kind of give you information for your own self is H2CO3 is not stable. This automatically breaks down into carbon dioxide, gas, and water. And so when that happens, the carbon dioxide gas is when you put Alka-Seltzer into water, you see bubbling forms. That's due to the carbon dioxide gas. Complete the following reaction and label the conjugate acid and bases. The first compound is called oxalic acid, and I would tell you that that's an acid. Therefore, water must be our base in this example. So let's start by determining what our conjugate base is. So an acid is one that donates a proton, our H+. We'll donate it to the base, which is water. Conjugate base is what the acid becomes after it loses that. So we had two hydrogens. Now we only have one, C2O4 stays the same, and it was neutral, we're taking away positive, so it becomes negative. This is called oxalate ion. It's one of the polyatomic ions, but you don't need to remember the name of that one. And now the base is accepting the hydrogen ion, so we had two hydrogens, now we have three, that becomes our hydronium ion, and that is our conjugate acid for water as a base. Now, I put this reaction up here because I had a story to tell you regarding this similar reaction here. There was a lady, her name was Julia Turner, and she was married to a policeman named Glenn Turner. And in 1995,
Glenn Turner wasn't feeling well. He was dizzy. He had irregular breathing. He ended up going to the hospital that night. The hospital released him for having flu-like symptoms. He ended up later dying at home. And the report said he had cardiac dysrhythmia. Julia, after the death of her first husband, she went on later on and she moved out with a fireman named Randy Thompson. And in 2001, they found the fireman died as well. So at that point, they did an autopsy, and they found that he had calcium oxalate ions in his body. So they ended up going and digging out um, her first husband, Glenn Turner, and in his body, they found out that he had ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol is this compound down here. It's a compound that's found in antifreeze. It um, doesn't have any smell to it. It's odorless, um, it's colorless, and it has a sweet taste. And so what happens with ethylene glycol when you ingest it, it breaks down into toxic acids such as oxalic acid. And oxalic acid, when it travels through your body and it hits the kidneys, it's going to break down and the oxalate ions will react with calcium and they form calcium oxalate, which is what they found in the second guy's body. Here's what calcium oxalate looks like. It's these very sharp crystals. So those sharp crystals in your kidney is going to destroy it and that's what caused the death. Um, so what happened is they did back, they went back and in their investigation found out that Julia was feeding her husband's jello and the jello was spiked with antifreeze. And again, I said it doesn't have any taste to it or it tastes a little bit sweet, but it doesn't have any color or smell. So they didn't realize it was in there. So this is something that's a concern sometimes maybe in your um, garage at home. If you have antifreeze, if it spills on the ground, cats or dogs may lick it up and it could actually poison your animals. So you need to be careful when you have that around. Um, Julia Turner was convicted in 2001, the same year, and was sent to jail. Here are a few terms that I want you to know. Monoprotic, diprotic, and triprotic. This is ways we can classify our acids. Mono means one, di means two, and tri means three. Protic would be referring to our proton in our acid. So a monoprotic acid is an acid that will give up one proton. Diprotic are acids that give up two protons. And triprotic are acids that give up three protons. So an example would be HCl. Okay, It has one hydrogen, so it can donate that and end up having chloride. So that's one of our strong acids. This would be its conjugate base. Um, HNO3 would be the same thing. So how you can determine if you have mono, di, or triprotic acids is just look at the number of hydrogens. If you only have one hydrogen, okay, it's a monoprotic. It can only give up one hydrogen. Diprotic would be, for example, H2SO4, sulfuric acid, another one of our strong acids. This one, if you lose a hydrogen, you get HSO4 negative. I could then lose another hydrogen and get SO4 2 minus. Okay, so that's a two step process. I'm going to only ask you whenever I'm asking for, you know, acid conjugate base, I'm only going to ask you always to do one step. But know the terms that it could um, then have HOSO4 be an acid, and that could be the conjugate base SO4 2 minus. That would be an example of something that's amphiprotic if it can be an acid and a base. But just remember that di means it's going to have two hydrogens um, in your acid, and tri means you have three.